Okay, take your Bibles, please, and turn to Matthew, the first book. Green, okay. First book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I forgot after church on Sunday morning, I forgot to remind you that if you want a, a copy of this, uh, the, out of the 12 disciples, 12 apostles, nine of them were foreign missionaries. If you want to get, take a picture of the list after church, and come to me. We have the list all typed out. And you can see that a lot of people don't even know that nine of the apostles were foreign missionaries and hardly anybody remembers that three of them actually died on the foreign mission field. Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So Jesus is with the apostles and he's explaining to them exactly what's going to happen. They're going to go to Jerusalem. Jesus is going to be arrested. He's going to suffer many things. He's going to die for our sins. Then verse 22, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. Now you have to keep in mind here how evil this is. Now Peter is not only a Christian, he's one of the apostles. But he's rebuking God himself. You know, that is totally evil. Verse uh, 23, But he turned, as Jesus, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. It's very interesting what Jesus said. Now, the word savorest means this, the quality of, which renders a thing valuable. The quality which renders a thing valuable. Peter did not think the things of God were valuable. Peter thought that the things of this world were valuable. So once again, the word savers means the quality which renders a thing valuable. As Jesus told Peter in verse 23, this is the title, For thou savorest not the things that be of God. In other words, you don't, Peter, you don't value the things that are of God. Let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you help me as, as I present this passage and preach about it. And I pray that you help me to say exactly what needs to be said. In Jesus' name, amen. There are some things that are valuable to God, which Peter did not think were valuable. Number one, Christ's payment for our sin. Christ's payment for our sin, that's verses 21, 22. Once again, verse 22, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this should not be unto thee. Jesus, you're not going to die for our sins. I mean, how foolish. <laughs> Jesus is God. Jesus came all the way to earth to pay the price for our sin, and Peter said, you are not going to do that. In other words, Christ paying the price for our sin was not important to Peter. It was not valuable to Peter. The only way we can go to heaven is that Jesus paid for our sin. That's it. There's no other way. But Peter said, no, no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> the problem was, and this can happen to any Christian. I said, it happened to Peter. The so-called, what we would call the human leader of the apostles. His mind, you remember last Sunday morning I talked about from Colossians chapter 2, that we're not supposed to be deceived by the, uh, the philosophies and teaching of this world? That's exactly what happened to Peter. He's supposed to be the spiritual leader amongst the apostles. They look to him for leadership, and he's telling Jesus, you're not going to die for our sins. This is the reason why coming to church is so important. Yes. Because when you come to church, you're going to be reminded again and again and again that we are sinners who deserve to die and go to hell. Yes. 
But Jesus paid the full price for our sin. He died on the cross. He shed his blood, died on the cross, and he rose again from the dead. He paid everything for our sin. You'll be reminded of that over and over again. Why do we have the Lord's Supper? Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. Because as human beings, we forget the things that are truly valuable to God. And so God said, you're going to have to come together as a church and have the Lord's Supper so you can remember the price Jesus paid for our sin. So when you come to church, we are constantly reminding you of the fact Jesus died for our sin. You're not going to hear that outside the church. Unless, you know, you put in a preaching tape somewhere, or you listen to it on the radio, or you go, you go on the internet specifically to listen to a message. You're not going to hear that when you go to work. You're not going to hear that if you go to school. You're not going to hear that outside the church building. Because people do not care that Jesus died for our sin. So you're not going to hear that mentioned. So God says he wants us to remember that over and over and over and over again, lest we forget it. Just like Peter, he forgot it. Why do you think Jesus came? How many times a week do you hear outside the church? Amongst normal conversation with people, how many people bring up the fact that Jesus died for our sin? Right. Yeah. <laughs> we are coming to uh, Christmas time. And this happens. We were in uh, Trinidad, between Trinidad and Philippines. That's 10 years. Never one time at Christmas time. Not even one time. The whole time we were in Trinidad, the whole time we were in Philippines. All the Christmases we spent there. I never heard anybody outside our church or church members. I never had one person talk to me about Jesus coming to earth at Christmas time. Except if I gave them a track. I wrote a track called Merry Christmas. And I give people a track and then they would talk about it. Not even one time in 10 years. The people who claim to be Christians talk to me about Jesus outside the church. That's sad. That's very sad. You know, we go shopping in Trinidad, Philippines, some stores that play so-called Christmas music, but most of the time is about let it snow, you know, Andy Williams. <laughs> it's strange going into a country, you know, that's above the equator, and it's 95 degrees, and you hear Andy Williams saying, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> And they play Frosty the Snowman or Santa Claus or whatever, you know. Where are you going to hear that Jesus paid the price for our sin? Our first uh, Christmas in the Philippines, uh, I was inviting people to come to church for Christmas service. Uh, every year, ever since our first year on the mission field in Nigeria, we always had a service on Christmas Day. And we had a lot of people come to church on Christmas Day. Even when, when church was not on, even when Christmas was not on Sunday, we still had a lot of people come. One time we had a high day on Christmas of a thousand, and that was not even a Sunday. Because people wanted to come to church on Christmas, because they wanted to honor Christ. But anyway, I was inviting people to our Christmas Day service in the Philippines. And I met uh, two young men talking to each other, and I gave them my, my track, Merry Christmas, and I said, we would like to invite you for our Christmas service. Christmas Day service. And one man spoke for both of them and said, well, we're going to be busy on Christmas Day. I said, with what? He, he said, we're going to be busy with our families. And then he said, it. he said, isn't Christmas about families? And I said, no. Christmas is about Jesus coming to earth to pay the price for our sin. Amen. And you know, even as Christians, it's so easy for us to believe the philosophies of the world. Hey, it's, I've, I've heard Christians say, oh, it's all about family. It is not about family. It's about Jesus coming to earth to pay the price for our sin. That's what it's all about. But it's so easy for us to forget about that. Even though we are Christians, Peter's a Christian. He's an apostle walking with Jesus, listening to Jesus teach day after day for three years now. And Jesus said, this is why I've come to earth. I'm going to, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die on that cross to pay for our sin, pay, pay for your sin. Peter says no. Peter was not valuing the things of God. Number one, the Christ payment for our sin. Number two, what are some things that, that Peter did not value that we do not value sometimes? Number two, serving Jesus Christ. Look at verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, 
If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall, shall find it. Jesus is not talking about dying. What he's talking about is giving your life over to God, living for Jesus. In other words, serving Jesus. The reason Jesus talked specifically about serving Jesus was because Peter did not value serving Jesus. Peter did not think that it was important. You know, most Christians, just like Peter, most Christians do not believe serving Christ is that important. You know, when, when the, the lockdown started, I, I told my wife immediately, immediately, this is going to be a really big test for Christianity. I said, that's what it is. And unfortunately, most Christians failed it. It was a big test. We had a perfect opportunity to tell the world who Jesus really is and what Jesus really means to us. And most, most Christians dropped the ball. Fortunately, we did not lock down because the last announcement we heard, you know, there, it was all in Tagalog. <laughs> we didn't understand half the announcements. But one announcement, the last one we heard when it locked down, it said uh, groups of, uh, you can't, the, the largest number you can have is 50. So we, we, we didn't ask anybody. We just kept having church. <laughs> you know, we didn't ask anybody. And they must have known, but nobody said anything to us. So we, fortunately, we just kept having church. And some people were coming. Not everybody, but people are still coming. The problem with Christians is we do not value Jesus Christ. We, we're not grateful to him. We're not thankful to him. And so we're not serving him like we should be. Do you realize what, what we could do with the world? Uh, I told you about the apostles last Sunday. Nine of the 12 apostles were four missionaries. That's 75%. Can you imagine the impact we could have on the world if only 10% of Christians actually went out and told people about Christ? Right. Amen. We could change the whole world. Yes. And those apostles, they changed the world during the first century. Yes. As I mentioned on Sunday, they were the gospel made it all the way to Britain. Some people think that it made it all the way to Scandinavia, Denmark, Sweden area. It definitely made it to China and definitely made it to Japan. Wow, that's really huge. With no airplanes, you know, uh, ships that would take, you know, three months that would take, you know, uh, a week today, they were on the, a ship for months, but they got the gospel out. So just 10% of Christians if we serve Christ, can you imagine what we could do in this world? Yes. But Peter, what Peter was saying is, this is not important to me. Number one, there's some things that are valuable to God, but they were not valuable to Peter. And the same is true with us. Number one, Christ's payment for our sin. Number two, serving Jesus. The number three, number three, God's glory. Look at verse 27. For a son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, then he shall reward every man according to his works. Look with me at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. First Corinthians 10, verse 31. It says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. The glory of God refers to who God is and what God is. When the Bible talks about giving glory to God, what it, what it, what it means is, we are showing man, our fellow man, we're showing people who God is and what God is. That's what it means to give glory to God. Peter was only interested in the things of this world. That's all. Look with me at Ephesians chapter 1. So 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, 
Then verse 12. Ephesians 1, 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So you trusted Christ for salvation. We're supposed to give glory to God. Verse 13. In whom you also trusted after that, you heard the word of truth. In other words, you heard about salvation. You trusted Christ for salvation. You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed. You received that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto redemption, of the purchased possession, unto the what? The praise of his glory. Who God is and what God is. That's the most important thing. Giving glory to God. Now back to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Then look at verse 27 again. I'm sorry, verse 23. Verse 23. But he turned, as Jesus turned, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that you don't value, you value not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Peter was only interested in the things of this world. Uh, Peter was a fisherman. As you may know, Peter, uh, Andrew, their brothers, uh, James and John, their brothers, they're all fishermen together. Peter could talk about fishing. He could talk about the Roman government. He could talk about sports of that day. But he did not like to talk about Jesus Christ himself. We're, we're missing something in Christianity. Uh, for, for many, many years, uh, being on the mission field, you, you, you miss a lot of the things that are so, you know, what we would call the things of the world. You know, there's, we, didn't have, we didn't have television, so we didn't, and we didn't have uh, international radio. We, you know, all the sports were gone, all the major games were gone. It didn't mean anything because you couldn't listen to it. No, couldn't watch anything. So you kind of, over the years, I kind of lost all the interest, you know, of the professional sports, and it really didn't mean much to me. So it came back, and then uh, we noticed, I, you know, I watched the game maybe once or twice, and, 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 and you watch the commercials, you watch, I didn't watch the half times, but they watched the halftime shows, and the past, what, like five or six years, I didn't watch it, but I heard what there was what, for the uh, Super Bowl. The halftime show was nothing but uh, a worship of Satan. That's right. Really all it was. And we would hear Christians talk about the Super Bowl. There, there's something wrong with us. Because how, how we could talk about somebody honoring Satan. And I saw pictures of it. People dressing like Satan. How, how can we think that that's okay? And tell the world, oh yeah, did you see the Super Bowl? It's, it's just, when, when, since we were out of the country so long, we come back, those type of things, it, it, I, it just bothers us. I can't, I can't quite understand it. And God comes to us and said, look, as Christians, we're supposed to give glory to God. When uh, the lockdown started, I sent uh, a message to uh, our former church members in Trinidad and Nigeria. In Trinidad, on Sunday mornings, the, things that, the three things, main things that kept people from church were these three things. Number one, if it was a nice day, they went to the beach instead of going to church. Number, number two would be sports. There'd be some sort of game somewhere, and they'd, they'd stay away from church to be involved in, in some, or to watch some sort of sports. And number three was their work. Those three, three main things kept them from church. What, one guy, I invited him, gave him a track, invited him to our church, and he said, well, I can't come to church because I work on Sunday morning. And, and because a lot of people who had businesses worked on Sunday morning, a lot of people. I said, what kind of business are you in? He said, I, I, we sell chickens. Chickens were, the chicken was real big in Trinidad. So he owned like a chicken farm and they would butcher chickens on Sunday morning. And I was trying to encourage him to come to church and say, well, you know, we're supposed to honor God, but that, you know, he didn't want to hear anything, so. 
And I told our church the next Sunday, I said, you know, I, I told them the story. And I said, can you imagine in heaven the angels getting together and talking about the conversation that man told me he can't come to church because he's, you know, killing chickens? And the, one angel says to another, chickens, what's that? <laughs> you know, and another angel described the chicken and said, that's what's keeping them from church, a chicken? <laughs> so I wrote to our churches in um, Trinidad and Nigeria. I, I wrote them, I told them this. I said, least the lockdown, remove three excuses for not going to church. There you go. They couldn't go to the beach, couldn't go to work. There were no sports. So in one fell swoop, God took away every excuse they had for going to church. So God said, you want to work? I'll take it away. You know, you want sports? I'll take it away. You want the beach instead of me? I'll take it away. All, all God was doing was giving everybody a big test. And most people fail. We're supposed to give God glory. Christians are supposed to put God first. But the problem is we really do not value God like we should. He is not important enough to us. Christ's payment for our sin, serving Jesus, glory to God. Do you really value God? Does he really mean something to you? Let's pray.